Sabbath School builds faith and practice through the daily study of the Holy Scripture. Welcome to the Sabbath School Lessons in the New Jersey Territory. Hello, greetings to you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is indeed another opportunity and privilege uh, for us to uh, come together to uh, study the Word of God. And so today we are on lesson number five, talking about horizontal atonement, the cross and the church. And so we are going to uh, get started soon, but before we do that, we will uh, have our panels, uh, panelists introduce themselves. Uh, we are missing uh, one today, and uh, we know that she will join us uh, uh, next time. So we're going to start with uh, Pastor Buzzi, if you can introduce yourself. Pastor Marie Buzzi, I'm from the Collingwood Park Church, and I serve there as an elder. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Giardinico. Hello, I'm Pastor Fortunato Giardinico of the Toms River District, which includes Toms River, Browns Mills, and High Sound Southern Day Baptist. All right, thank you so much. And I am Pastor Sterling at the Academy Church. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Pastor uh, Giardinico, can you uh, lead us in prayer, please? Sure, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much again for this opportunity. We can come together and study your word. Lord, as we open the book of Ephesians, we invite your Holy Spirit to enlighten us, that you may speak to us as we read and study and discuss the wonderful truths you have for us, Lord. And that as those who are listening, Lord, that they may also come to know you and your light, your love, and your truth. We ask all this in the loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, we last week uh, we were talking about uh, how Paul, you know, writing the letters to the Ephesians to the Gentiles, and he mentioned to them that, uh, you know, once they were dead in sin, uh, is like they were nobody, uh, but through the blood of Christ, uh, God reconciled uh, them to Himself. And so he was talking more about the vertical relationship between man and God. Now, Paul is moving from the vertical relationship towards the horizontal relationship. That is, after we have been called by God and he had uh, made us alive in him, there should be uh, some uh, practical uh, steps that we take to show that we have been changed. And last week we were talking about faith uh, and works and the difference between those two. And so here we talk more about the, the work part of it. The once you have been transformed uh, uh, by, by Christ, then there should be some evidence of that transformation. All right, so uh, we are in Ephesians chapter two, um, verse 11 to verse ele uh, 22, that would be the passage for, uh, for this week. So let's look at uh, verse uh, 11 to verse uh, 13 first. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to verse 13. All right. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11, 12, and 13. The word of God reads, Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Amen. Right. Amen. So, uh, in 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 chapter two, verse one and two, Paul, you know, Paul uh, asks them to remember that they were once dead, right? They were nobody. Now he's asking them to remember that they were um, were Gentiles in the flesh. Now, why, why do you think it's important uh, for, for them and for us to remember our past? What does that do for us? 
Uh, I think it's important to remember our past because it, it helps us to know where we were, where we are now, and where we're going because of Jesus Christ, what he has done for us. That makes us appreciate uh, his salvation even more than the, those who were close by. Mm. You know, because we were really rejected, far away from him. We were sick. You know, we still sin. We still have sin as a, a tendency, but when we have Christ, now we have a different uh, hope. We have we have life in Him. Amen. 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 Pastor, you want to add to that? Or? Yeah. Um, you know, it says uh, when we didn't have Christ, when we didn't know Him at all. Um, you know, we we had no hope. We were we were we didn't even know about the promise or or any any hope of the future. And so, but with with Christ, then you know we get to know all these things. We get to hope for the future. We get to um, live in the present. But without Christ, you know, we're everything's dark. It says, you know, right. We are Indeed. children of darkness, and <laughs> we are, you know, slaves to our our desires or our, you know, um, the flesh. And so, uh, yeah. There's, but with Christ, we, when we know our past, we, we now see how far we've come in Christ. And we just get to, when you see the difference, how, how far right. God has brought us, it's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing. Indeed. And, and, and you know, sometimes we, uh, we tend to forget that we were once like that. And so oh, yeah. uh, there are people who become, for example, they, they're rich now and they have a lot of money, uh, but they don't remember when they were poor, so so they can't identify with the poor man. But a person who is a millionaire now and remember how they were hungry and they couldn't find food, they are able to identify with um, the person who is experiencing that and uh, will be willing to um, to accommodate and to help in whatever is, uh, thing that is uh, that is needed. Mm. So Paul mentioned that the Jews were without what? They were without Christ, uh, and not the Jews, the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. uh, they were, another thing is that they're aliens, meaning that they, they were excluded from citizenship. Uh, I know, for example, in America, you know, we have this, um, you know, in, in terms of foreigners coming to the United States and become citizens, uh, you know, some people don't want them to become citizens. Uh, 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 but when you are, when you become a citizen, uh, then you are able to partake in many of the things that the country, um, offers, but the Gentiles, because, uh, they were alienated, they have no chance of becoming citizens of Israel. Mm. Uh, and so they were also, uh, foreigners to the covenant of promise. So the promise that God gave to Abraham they could not benefit from that promise and therefore that means that they were without hope and they were without god mm. so they were they were in a very sad situation right not, not having a hope for uh for the future and don't you think that many of our um, neighbors many people uh, around the world uh in similar situation they're living without hope uh, how 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 do you live without hope not knowing that you know things can change i think it's very sometimes you just don't live i think there's a lot of people who are in despair so much and that they they find no hope for the future and you know they they commit suicide and it's a very tragic and, and sad thing to live without hope. If you have no hope for the future, for your current state, then the will to live is, is, is not really there. And I think that's, that's one of the major reasons why people commit suicide, right? Yeah. They, they don't believe that things can get better mm -hmm. and believe that death will be better than, um, than wow. the situation. Yeah that's, yeah. that's a very sad, uh, place to be in it is it is it is and so and so spiritually uh we were we were like the gentiles right without hope 
Uh, but it says here in verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near mm. by the blood <clears throat> of Christ. How? In, in, in what way? Uh, what, what, if somebody asks you, I mean, what is so important about the blood of Christ? How would you answer that? Well, the blood of Christ it refers to the sacrifice Christ made on our behalf. And, you know, it's, it just goes to show that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for, for us. And so he paid a price so that we can be reconciled to God. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a ransom. And, you know, so when we're the, the thought being brought near, means that we were far, we were really far from God. And, you know, the Bible says in Isaiah, you know, because of your iniquities, your sin it separated you from God. And so our sin, <laughs> keeping us really far from God, God wanted us to be reconciled. And, and the way to reconcile us to bridge that gulf was through the death of Christ. And because he took uh, upon our punishment, he paid our price, our debt, and because of that, we are now free to, to commune with God, to be in connection with him. And, you know, that's why Jesus, he is that ladder, that Jacob, you know, that Jacob's dream that connected heaven and earth. Right. And so with, because of his blood, and we see because of his blood, we also see the enormity of the cost, right, of, of what sin our our sin is and you know it's the saying that our sins have nailed jesus there on the cross and he did this willingly just so that we can be brought close to god so that we can have a relationship with him so that we can be restored uh reunited and reconciled reconciled with uh with god and so it's a gift that he's given us and so uh all we have to do is to is to accept Mm -hmm. accept that gift so we were once far but now we are drawn near to christ and and as the song said you know uh near the cross right so you know the cross uh gives us the opportunity to get to god and so we we are so grateful and thankful uh for the sacrifice uh on uh on the cross so so now uh the the, the gentiles uh because of their own now Adam, I mean, Adam's sin, and because of Adam's sin, you know, uh, there, there came the separation uh, from God. Uh, the Jews, they sin as well, uh, and, and so they had the separation from God, but God uh, chose uh, the Jews as a people uh, who will identify or represent him and should have been an influence to the rest of the world. Uh, so the, the Gentiles, were there by themselves they were out there outcast it's like uh because you were born in a certain country that you you are there and so you just can't come for example to the united states uh without you know the proper uh documentation and so on uh, and live here so sometimes it, it, to the question may be did they was it the fault of the gentiles uh well yes because we are all we we we, we all sin uh, and and they God uh, chose um, the Jews as his representative, uh, but he's also uh, made plans uh, for, uh, for the Gentiles to be grafted in into that, into that symbol. So let's, let's look at that now in verse 14 uh, to verse 16, uh, where, Christ, um, where Christ is doing his work uh, to reconcile and to break down the, the wall that separated the Jews and the Gentiles. Right, so can someone read uh, verse 14 uh, through verse uh, 16? Okay, verse 14 says, For he himself is our peace, is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of, of separation, having abolished in his flesh the en enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, 
and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. The enmity. All right, so th there's a lot here. So first of all, let's, let's get this one out of the way uh, 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 before we get to the real meaning of what Paul is talking about here. Uh, let's get uh, verse 15. Having abolished in the flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandment contained in the ordinances. Now, there's some people who will use this verse to say, well, God has abolished all of the commandments, and so we don't have to keep them anymore. How do you respond to that? Uh, the commandments that uh, Paul is talking about right now is uh, those ceremonial laws that they used to do. That was a, a prefiguration, like a something that predicted the, the coming of Christ. All the, the sacrifices they were doing, the circumcisions and all these ceremonial laws, they were like a, something that showed that, you know, Christ, what Christ was coming to do for us. But once Christ came, he did it. There was They were not necessary for us to do. That's why at one time they had to meet and they, they, there was discussions, separations between the Jews and Gentiles about circumcision. If you're not circumcised, you cannot be a, a part of uh, God's people. So they had to completely say, just leave those Gentiles alone. They don't have to be circumcised because the circumcision of the heart happened already when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. So it was it was not necessary anymore. Some, some of the Sabbath they used to ob observe, they had different types of Sabbath, not the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath of the Ten Commandments. So there were different ordinances that they used to practice mm -hmm. at that time. Okay. Yeah, I, I think if you even just go to uh, the Gospels, Matthew 5, um, uh, verse 17 and 18, this is this is Jesus speaking, taking thought that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. So Jesus wasn't, you know, when he came to die on the cross, he didn't come to abolish the law or the Ten Commandments. But the thing that was abolished was exactly what you said, Pastor Buzi, that it was the ordinances, the ones that pointed to Jesus, the, the, the sacrificial uh, system. And, uh, if, and you could even tell that this isn't what really Paul was talking about. Uh, the Ten Commandments, because even later in the book in Ephesians, right, the, the lesson quotes uh, that he he quotes other other commandments, right? right. So mm -hmm. Paul has a big respect for the Ten Commandments, and he's using it as you know to encourage you know his the 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 Ephesians, and so you know he's not talking about that Christ got rid of the Ten Commandments or anything, got rid of the law. And even in other letters, you could see that Paul never talks about, he, he doesn't make light of the law or, uh, of the Ten Commandments. Romans 3.31 says, do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. So clearly, Paul isn't saying that the law or, you know, the, the Ten Commandments were abolished. And so... Uh, some people who may think that this may allude to that is is not really taking it into the whole context. Uh, so, yeah. I think that yes, uh, the the context is important here, right? mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, Paul uh, is and especially in this verse, uh, you know, talking about uh, circumcision, right? Mm. Um, and so and so. Uh, the Jews were circumcised, you know, Abraham and Isaac and, and all of that. Um, and so the, the, the Jews then wanted the Gentiles to, to be circumcised as they come into the church. And it created a, a great, a big controversy there. Uh, but um, Paul said um, that has been broken down, that wall has been broken down. Uh, a matter of fact, we are told that in the temple, they actually had a, a wall, a physical wall, where the Jews uh, were separated uh, from, from the Gentiles. 
uh, in, 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 the, in the assembly. And so Paul said that that wall needs to come down because uh, you have been made a, a new man. Uh, you have been made new uh, in, in, in Christ. So now he said that he himself is our peace. Uh, what is this peace here now? That is, is peace the absence of war? Is it the absence of conflict? Uh, what, what peace is, is, is Paul referring to? It is the peace that we receive from Christ, the peace that passes all understanding. We, without Christ, we don't have peace. And that peace is uh, the reconciliation that Christ brought us. Um, and he opened the gate for everyone to come in. To, he gave us hope. That gives us peace, but that doesn't mean that between among human beings, they always have peace. Right, right. right. <laughs> peace that the, Christ himself, he brought to us. Yeah. Through his blood. So you, you're always going to have like someone uh, in the home, like siblings, you're going to have someone who is like the peacemaker, right? So there, there, there's a brother and sister who is not, you know, uh talking or there's some disagreement there may be someone who acts as the 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 bridge between the two and and so we were separated from god we were at war with god basically and christ became our peace uh bridging the gap between um, us and and god and he's also bridging the gap uh between us and our fellow men as well as he did uh for uh, for um, for the Jews, so breaking down the wall. So let's take this to our day now. Do you think that um, for one as Seventh Day Adventists, do you think that we have created walls uh, that kind of separated us from uh, the world? And and are these walls good? Should they be broken down? Or what was your feeling on those? Yeah, I think that as Seventh day Adventists, sometimes we have like the Pharisees and the Jews of old. Some we have developed sort of a, an elitist type of attitude where we almost look down on other, other people, mm -hmm. sad to say, where it, because we think that we know the truth, we uh, and you know, everyone else is wrong, <laughs> and <laughs> And, and we, we have also a certain lifestyle, you know, uh, dress, diet, and, you know, uh, you know, think that we, we uphold. And so it, it kind of creates this artificial division, I, I think, where we don't want to, we, we kind of look at down on other people that are, are different from us. And we don't, re we don't remember <laughs> that we were you know, that's why I think it's very well saying, okay. therefore, remember <laughs> where you came from, that you were once Gentiles, right? Yeah. But we don't remember that. And we, we, we just, uh, we, we don't remember to relate to them, uh, to these people, to those who aren't Adventists. And, you know, I, I, I think sometimes we kind of come off as maybe like snobbish or, <laughs> or, 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 or something to, to other people. And I, I think this is, uh, definitely very relatable to us and i think it's something that we need to really uh learn from from paul here in, in ephesians indeed indeed uh and i you know i know for for the adventist church we have because we have um education is 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 a pillar that uh, of the church and and so many many of our people are are, are well educated and so on and uh, education can also be a barrier. Uh, we, we may look down on, on, on certain people uh, who may not have that level of education um, mm. that, that we have, or we want to put certain people in, in position because they have certain letters behind their names. Uh, and, and so that's, 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 that's some issue that we, we definitely have to deal with. Uh, I don't know, there, there are times when, for example, you try to practice uh, friendship evangelism, right? So friendship evangelism, uh, you ask the members to invite your friends, invite your friends to church. Um, but the problem is that we don't have a lot of friends outside of the church. Mm. Uh, is it that uh, 
because uh, we were from since we were small, we we were told, you know, um, not to be in the world or to watch the company we keep. Uh, that we 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 don't have friends uh, that are outside. So you have a community guest day, and you invite you asking members to invite uh, people for the community guest day. And people come in, but they are members of uh, of our sister churches, mm -hmm. uh, not the members from the from the community. So, have we created that? How can we address that? In other words, we want our our members or young people to uh, not to be influenced by the world, but at the same time, you want them to build friendship so that they can uh, uh, witness to them and 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 uh, you know use that as a tool for evangelism. It is a little bit ambiguous sometimes for young people. Um, at the same time, we would like them to uh, stay away from the world so, do, so they don't get so complacent, so you know they don't become like the world. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they have to make friends to uh, bring them closer to Christ. Some of them go to colleges and that are non-Christians, and public secular colleges and, and schools, they need to have some kind of relationship with their friends so that they can share Jesus with their friends. But it is it is difficult for them. I remember when I became a Seventh-day Adventist at 16 years old, um, I even stopped being friends with my own family in, in, in a sense. Wow. I own, when I say being friends, like not very close. We just have like, hi, hello. Sometimes we call each other. but not really participating in everything that they were doing mm. because I was afraid they would pull me out, you know, away from, from the church. And they, they have tried that. They tried so many times. Uh, but when they realize now I'm not going to, you know, they're not going to overcome me. <laughs> so now the relationship has <laughs> changed a little bit. And, and I have grown more in, in the Lord also. I've learned that it's not staying away from them that really will bring them to Christ or would make a difference for us. In fact, I need to participate in their activities, but show them the love of Christ and be different because call, Christ calls me to be different. So now it's a different relationship, but it took me many years before I understood that. And I, I think sometimes we are afraid to maybe just get out of our comfort zone. We like being with people who have our same values and have same beliefs. And we almost create these echo chambers, you could say. <laughs> yeah. um, mm -hmm. But it, it's very right, important right. to get out of our comfort zone. And we have to, and I think this is what Paul is really saying here, is that to remember where we came from and how Christ reached out to you, right? Because the more we remember that, how, how far off we were from Christ and how we were hopeless and, you know, we, we didn't have a community. And when Christ came into our lives, you know, everything changed. We, we see the, the love that he shared with us, how far he came down, you know, from heaven to, to mingle with us. You know, it, it helps us to, to also reflect that in our lives and, and with our, 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 the people that God has placed in, you know, in our spheres. So, so that we can also emulate that, that love that God did for us. You know, Christ came down and he was known to be with, you know, eating out with publicans and sinners and tax collectors. And here, you know, we don't want to be seen with them, <laughs> right, uh, as much as possible. And, you know, it's, it's, I think we are kind of like tilting the same tendencies of what the Pharisees were, where they don't want to, they're, they're trying to protect themselves in a sense, or they're, they're trying to not sin so much in a sense that they're, they're shunning everyone else out now. And, and they've now start, we're starting to develop like these holier than thou type of attitudes. And so um, it, that's why it's very mm -hmm. important to know where we came from, know how God reached out to us and that'll help then us emulate how we can reach out to, uh, you know, and make friends also to to the community yeah. and, and to wherever we are. 
Indeed, having that having that uh, that influence. So breaking on the wall. So so we're talking about it, you know the church and and outside. What about within the church itself now? Um, you know, how well do you think uh, as a church we handle like race relation um, within our churches? I think we have failed in in many respects. If you just even look in, in into our history. Uh, um, and even in our, our, our division, the North American division, we have, uh, you know, um, conferences and, and, and unions that, that are divided by race. Um, and it's, it's, it's sad how that actually started. If, if you know the story, I, I can't remember exactly the names um, of, of the people involved, but I know that there was uh, a black person who was sick and this was during the time of the Joe, was it the um, Jim Crow? the segregation time of segregation, and you know there was a black person who was sick, and they, they and I think it was like the person was uh, light skinned, light skinned black, um, and they were brought to a hospital that was only for whites, only it was an Adventist hospital too, and then when they found out that this person was black, they they didn't treat him anymore. They tried to wait and transfer him to a black hospital and while he was while this person was waiting i believe uh this person died mm -hmm. and it outraged i know the the black community and you know it's a very sad history in our church but it's something that we need to remember so that we don't try to repeat yeah in in uh, i know they 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 talked about um because a lot of people are surprised that uh we have you know, white conferences and black conferences. A lot of people don't, don't realize that. Um, and they, they're wondering, um, do in today's society, do we still need that, right? Is it still, is it still applicable for, um, for today? They, they, I know they, in the history as well, they were talking about uh, reaching uh, your own people. And so I guess at a certain point in time of history, uh the blacks probably could have reached the blacks better right uh, you know because of racism and so on what's going on uh but we have to look at it for for in our present time now in 2023 uh do we still um need that or should we encourage it uh or just you know people um uh, our church uh maybe our church should just reflect the demographic where we live, right? So if you live in a town that is mixed with a lot of people, then that should be the makeup of the church. Um, uh, same as, you know, with school system, right? It reflects uh, the demographic of, um, of the city. Uh, so, I mean, uh, we, we, we need to break down some walls uh, and not only, um, not only race, but ethnicity as, as well. I can see there are cases where languages could be a problem and, and in cases like that we understand, uh, but just based on, on that, um, I think we, we probably need to take a second look at, uh, at um, that. Yeah, I, um, just to add one more comment. I, I know because of that incident, it did, that did spark the more representation for uh, you know, black people in, in, in our church. And I know the, that the, the, the conversation at the time was that they didn't want to have their own conferences. They wanted to just have more representation, mm. but, um, because they, uh, because of some issues that they weren't able to resolve, I think the best solution at the time was to have black conferences. And so now ever since then, I, I don't know what's happened. Maybe back then we, we haven't really looked back to see if that's still really necessary or if it's uh, something that we could, you know, move on and, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, there, there were uh, two years, a couple of years ago, there was some conversation uh, mm. happening with some presidents and so on about it, but uh I don't think anybody's really pushing it that 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 much um, because of uh, maybe self-interest. Uh, who's going to lose? Who's going to gain? Something, whatever the case is. Um, but these are things that we we definitely need to um, need to work on. Uh, 
Mm. Now, uh, in terms like of breaking down the walls as well, uh, yeah, Pastor Buzi, you have something to say? Yeah, I would like to add, we yes. need to remember our relationship with God is not just vertically, it needs to be horizontally. Amen. If you accept the cross, just like the cross is vertical and horizontal, that's why Christ wants to, us to remember, right? And that demolishes the partitions of, among us. I know we have, we came from f very far. Like if we remember where we are, we were with the segregations, we have progress, right? So we hope that the progress continues until Jesus comes back. Amen. We don't know how far it's going to go, but we hope that uh, those who have accepted the vertical relationship who has that kind of relationship with Christ, they would change their mind in that area so they can go across horizontally, uh, horizontally to reach out to, to their friends, their neighbors. There will be no separation among the, uh, you know, in our communities. This is my uh, church. This is your church. This is your territory. You may go to a church and then you're not so you're feeling so welcome because of the color of your skin. You know, we hope that those who truly accept Christ makes it, you know, they try to make a difference in this life because this is really what Christ is awaiting to see in them. Amen. I don't know uh, how long it's going to take, but only God knows. And, and even um, in our church, even between men and women, there's some kind of uh, positions that men can occupy, the women cannot occupy. And they would say that Christ, all the disciples of Jesus were male. Uh, for example, they they were, you know, there's some, we, we, we know that there's the Bible mentions some disciples of Christ, but they weren't following Christ step by step wherever he was going. And Christ would have asked for women at that time. Maybe, you know, it was not look, it, it wasn't looking very well for women to be following all these men around at that time, uh, specifically. There were strict laws for that. Christ progressively make people understand that he's calling men, he's calling women, he's calling everyone, children, he's calling everyone to him so that we, we need to understand because if we say that Christ did all the disciples were male, we can say all the disciples were Jews as well. They were not Gentiles. <laughs> so we don't belong there either. So none of us belong anywhere. It's Christ <laughs> who put us in the place of position. In the Amen. That is elevated. No one of none of us. Amen. He is uh, he is he is our peace indeed. All right. I, I think we're running out of time here. Uh, uh, but I can't leave that breaking of the wall uh, without asking: Are there are there certain things that um, we have to hold? Right. So some people may say, "Okay, we got to break on the wall, break on the wall." But is 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 it that all the walls have to come down? So from somebody may argue that. Um, like the, the the gay community, uh, they may want the world breakdown so that they can come and 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 um, be part and, and uh, of, of of the church. Are there are there uh, some some stipulation as to what walls can come down and what walls can't? I think nobody should be refused, you know, to come. Give them a, like a. A stop you cannot come to God's church. Everyone is should be able to come to God's church, except mm -hmm. that uh, if there is something that the Bible asks to do, and the person doesn't want to do it, the person may not be able to occupy certain positions in the church. In that, in that sense, just like for everyone, every one of us, right? Whether you're a deacon, you're an elder, your pastor, your church member, whatever, there's some conduct that, according to the Bible principles, that we need to follow. So, but we cannot stop anyone from coming to God. We need to bring anyone, everyone. Mm -hmm. I think the, whoever, whoever it is. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, I think the, the hymn says it best, just as I am without one plea, right? That, but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. You know, there's nothing inside of ourselves no merit that we can do that will give us act you know the right to access god but it's what god has done for us always and so it doesn't matter who you are your background where you are right now and everything like that jesus has come mm -hmm. right it doesn't matter if you are gay if you're a thief murderer you know 
Yeah, straight. Come as, yeah, come as you are. And it's when we come to Jesus Christ that he breaks down all those walls and he mm -hmm. transforms us so that we can walk in the way we should go. And so, you know, God doesn't say change yourself first and then come to me. Right. <laughs> he says he'll, he'll allow us to come to him so that we can be changed. Indeed, uh, uh, the power of, um, of the cross to, to, to bring us uh, uh, to, um, to God. That we are far away from him, but the blood of Jesus um, bring us close, uh, uh, close to him. And so as a, as a church, then we, 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 we represent the temple. Uh, and, and, and the lesson points out, Paul points out that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And, you know, the cornerstone is basically uh, placed there and, and every other stone that is placed in the building is, is measured according to the position of the cornerstone. So we don't judge our lives based on others, but we judge our life based on Christ and the cornerstone of Christ to make sure that we are in alignment. So when they put down another stone, if it is not in alignment with the cornerstone, then they will have to change it. And so if our lives is not in alignment with God, then we make the necessary adjustment uh, to be um, in alignment uh, with him. All right, so uh, I'm going to uh, ask if you um, can give your takeaway uh, from this lesson or a point that you want, that we may have missed that you want to uh, uh, bring out um, for us. Yeah, I, I like that in verse 13, so, you know, starting from verse 11, it's talking about remember where you came from, how you were without Christ, without hope, without, you know, without God. But in verse 13, it's that same word. It says, but now, right? Mm -hmm. It's a great, but one of those great, but yes, yes. sentences, just like in verse four, but God, right? But now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I, I think God always intervenes so that he, we can be joined to him, so that we can be reconciled to him. If, I think it's that hope that, that burns within us, that, mm -hmm. that it's God who, who brought us thus far. It, it, and it's amazing. Like, you know, the second that Adam and Eve sinned, Right. What was the what was the next thing that happened? God was walking in the garden looking for them. Looking for them. And I, I think I think that was just amazing that it's the same thing in our lives. When we were far off, God was looking for us and searching for us. And then he found us. We, we found him. And so knowing that it'll help us to break down those walls, that there are people whom they, that God hasn't yet found them or, or they haven't yet found God. And we have to remember our past <laughs> so that we could relate to them so that we can also reach out to them so that God can use us to, to minister to them. You know, uh, in second Corinthians, uh, was it five eighteen? I believe, you know, God gave us the ministry of reconciliation also, right. To reconcile the world to him, to also share and preach the peace that God has has given us and you know Adam and Eve when they sinned they did not have peace right they they started looking at themselves they saw that they were naked they tried to clothe themselves with fig leaves and they even when confronted by God they were blaming each other right they had no peace hmm. but God he intervened because okay. of his intervention they were able to have peace they were they were able to be clothed and they they were also given hope, right? You know, I'll put MNC between you and I see it. I I think that was that's just amazing. Um, and so uh, it, it's very important to just remember that was but God statements, those but now statements. You know, in, in our lives, we were like this before, but God intervened in my life, and we're we're now we have hope and and in, in the future. And so uh, you know, I, I have one poem that I want to share. Um, and this is uh, entitled Looking Back, and it's, it's me reflecting on my history and walk with God and how, how far he's brought me. So 
It says, as I look back and see my history, I remember all things you've done for me, how you took me in and called me family and gave me a hope to live eternally. I see how you led throughout my life. The evidence of your hand was right. You gave me a direction to look, a path you traveled for me, I took. I see how you made life meaningful, showing me how I am valuable. You created me for a reason, to love and find souls to win. I see you were there in all my smiles, never forsaking me even in my trials. The promise I am with you always gave me strength through the days. I see you instructing me day by day, guiding me in the narrow way. You gave me a blessed education, teaching me more about redemption. I see and count the many blessings you laid in my life for refreshing. You gave friends to keep me sane, the ones I love and call by name. As I look back and see my past, I, how time flew by so fast, I thank you for my experience, making my life a difference. Amen, amen indeed. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, uh, for sharing that uh, with us. Uh, Pastor Buzi, do you have any takeaway? My takeaway is the... Is the people of God, we have to remember, we're not saved because we are Jews or we, we saved because we are Gentiles, but we are saved because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. He has reconciled both of us to him and all of us to him. In Christ, like Paul said, there's no Jews, there's no Gentile, there's no Greeks, there's no male, there's no female, there's no slaves. There's, we all one in Christ. Amen. So we have to remember that and remember where we came from especially mm. as Seventh-day Adventists, so that we can uh, remember to be loving to other people who do not know Christ as, as we know, or who do not have the same information that we have. But if they want to come to Christ, help them to make the transition instead of pushing them away from Christ. Amen. Amen indeed. And so our vertical relationship with God is very much reflected in our horizontal relationship with our fellow men. And so we thank you once again for, uh, for joining us. And we uh, pray that God will bless you and your family as you continue to study the word of God. Until next time, uh, be good to yourself and uh, remember to keep trusting.